in guns are cool when they're working. I just wish they worked more often. <laughs> Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Monday. Yeah, Monday. I'm not gonna lie, guys. Never been a breakfast food person, you know, eggs, sausage, all that stuff. And I've never liked coffee. So to me, breakfast doesn't get any better than some warmed up pizza and a monster. Well, let's go see what the hell we're gonna do today, because I really don't know yet. One thing I do know I need to do is start the day checking on water. We got water on a couple ditches yesterday, and then this one turned on about an hour ago, 6 o'clock. See if I can do this without dropping you guys. Look at that. Like a pro. <laughs> Bingo. Got four more boxes to go check. So this water... It pulls out of the main ditch back over here behind me, divides with a neighbor right here, goes into a pipeline, comes out of the pipeline right on the other side of the house, fills a pond right there, and then pressurizes the pivot that is somewhere back over there behind the shed. All those rains this spring that were crushing us during spring harvest, oh, spring harvest that went into July, um, as frustrating as they were, they were actually a massive blessing too. One, it kept our soil wet here, but two, it kept the river running high enough. We were technically in flood stage. When we hit flood stage, we're allowed to store water in our ponds or in our lakes as a canal. Normally, we can only store water from November 15th to March 15th. The rest of the year, it's use it or lose it. If you go into flood stage though to take pressure off the river you're allowed to open your storage lakes take water in and because we had almost no storage water at the start of the year because we were so dry all winter we have more water in storage right now on the 14th of august than we did on the first of may when we were trying to decide whether to plant a corn or not that's why it can be incredibly hard deciding what the hell we're going to do this one's looking good. This is that box Glenn and Kenny did a ton of concrete work on this spring, getting it fixed up, right? Um, but back to the water deal. So, you know, when I turn the camera around, you can see I'm watching Millennial Farmer up there in Minnesota, and he's non-irrigated. A month from now, he'll start talking about buying corn seed to get those huge discounts. I don't know what the first of May if I'm going to plant corn, let alone in the fall. So it's it's one of the things that makes our area very unique. Man, I need to spray some pigweeds. So here is that big ditch. So we were just up there a mile, basically where that grain bin is, sending water to that farm right over yonders. Water continues down, splits in half here. Half of it's going to follow this ridge, half of it follows that ridge. So I just checked my box to, what is that, to our left here on the camera down at the bottom where I my last divide with a neighbor. So now I'm gonna go this way and check a box where I divide with a neighbor this way. And yes, I am fully aware my voice sounds horrible. Um, took advantage this week of the kind of lull in farming. Took the family up to Colorado Springs for a couple days so the kids could go have some fun. And as always, whenever I go somewhere for a few days when I come back, I have no voice combination of one being more tired than when I left on vacation which I think every parent knows that feeling and two I've got allergies so whenever I go somewhere else for a few days when I come back my allergies are so screwed up so a couple days will get straightened out hopefully all the way at the bottom now you can see this pile of dirt that was from Kenny digging this out a week ago so same as same process as I showed you guys in what was that? Video? Two videos ago? Whenever that was. Either way, water's flowing into the catch pond down there. It'll fill up and go into here, into the big pond. So the last, if you look at the trees just to the left of that shed's roof, that's where we were. So the water flows a mile kind of diagonal to the big cottonwood tree, right? Look through the camera, right there. 
splits with a different neighbor there and then me and another neighbor come along the road split kind of right between them telephone poles on the other side of the road and then that's where my water just follows a ditch into here I can see a spray plane up in the air over there so it looks like they're getting started on some spider mites for us <sighs> all right let's go see what's next all that water looks good so now I'm gonna go check on the water that turned on yesterday it's always good to go check those we call them boxes or divides however you want to say it. check them a couple times a day just make sure you don't have random weeds floating down the ditch that gets stuck in it and all of a sudden you're not getting your water or your neighbor's pissed because he's not getting his water so you just go check them every once in a while it's really easy to do morning and night it's a pain in the ass in the fall when you gotta go out in the middle of the night but you know we're not to that point yet i just got thinking i should probably address the elephant in the room that being my face um so if you followed the page for any time you know my the hair length and my beard length it changes throughout the year it's never this long but it kind of fluctuates so I've always joked with my wife it's superstition you can't cut or shave during harvest well mainly it's because I can't schedule a haircut during harvest and shaving I've always hated since I was a kid well teenager and so I've never been good about shaving more than once a month so that was just always one of those jokes I've had going well, about halfway through spring harvest, Hector looked at me and said, Hey, I'll make a bet with you. First one to shave or get a haircut loses. Has to buy the other one a 30-pack. Now, drinking natural light, that's a whopping $20 bet. But I'm incredibly petty. So I want to win the bet. Luckily, his hair is already a lot longer than mine. He has a ponytail already. Which we make fun of every day. Trying to guilt him into shaving. But, don't worry. As soon as Hector gives in, I will be getting a haircut and a shave. Problem is, fall harvest is right around the corner. Then you run right into that superstition. I might not get a haircut or shave till this winter now. Down he goes. So what they're putting on is an insecticide to kill the spider mites. Uh, I don't know if I've explained it before. Spider mites basically just suck all the life out of the plant. Cause it to prematurely dry up and cause a massive yield loss. I can sit and watch these guys all day. I find this just fascinating. Okay, got everyone running in different directions. It's Blanca is a solo crew gonna take care of the hay she's got a bunch of hay to rake we'll bail at some point once some of this burns off I'm gonna go spray some hay Cameron's gonna get on a little sprayer spray weeds Aaron's going to help Kenny work on bridges they should set the last two today yeah they poured the concrete last week they're going over to set them and clean everything up so that project will be finished finally it's awesome uh, Bart and Glenn are scrambling in the shop trying to get a chopper head ready because harvest starts tomorrow. <laughs> uh, and originally, it was going to be, ah, oh, this one neighbor, he's got 50 acres of dry land. He just wants us to come and chop it, get it out of the way. Well, now I've already heard of field number two that we're going to after that. So it, it's going to be a slow trickle here for the next week. And then I think by at least the middle of next week, we will be into corn. It's already here. Ah. Boom is pressurized. Let's go see if we can't kill something. Sometimes your timing of water is almost perfect. So that sprinkler right there is headed this way. The pond is full, so we can't shut it off. This is gonna set just long enough before that hits. My only worry is right along the edge where there's quite a few pigweeds. It might not set long enough, but can't have everything be perfect. I don't know if I said earlier when I was listing everybody's jobs, Maddie's on the swather as per usual. 
but 35 acres down on to the next one which is 40. check it out guys see that corn there that's shorter sweet corn she is ripe and ready i've been picking it like crazy the last two days now it's got a few weeds in it so you gotta wear pants and long sleeves when you go in there but it don't get any better than fresh sweet corn like that all right now onto the field I wondered why there was a green strip out here. The waste ditch from the corn broke and sent water out into the hay. Luckily, I caught it before I drove into it. Huh. I'd really piss some guys off, put some deep sprayer tracks in the hay field. That was close. Oh, that non roundup ready new alfalfa looking dandy this field doesn't have a whole lot going on you can see some scattered pigweeds out there just hoping to keep it really clean we've had good luck with this field so far i think first and second cutting both made it in the barn sings how i can see a couple random blooms out there here and there third cutting is coming upon us quickly um second cutting we've got a couple hundred acres gone now we still have the other side of the river probably 300 ish acres to go yet um, by the end of this week we should have second cutting wiped out for the most part and then give it a week third cutting will be ready it's amazing out boy i mean once you get going in the summer it's just you lose track of when's the end of one start of the other because they just start overlapping each other there's some big weeds not a whole lot out here just trying to keep clean. And Jill's spreading manure over there. God, we got a lot of manure to go yet. Well, about the time Jill ran out of manure, I ran out of chemical. So the field she's spreading now that you saw her on, it's incredibly inefficient for her. Because you got a half a mile of this zigzag. Then you got to get on the county road to go to a feedlot that way. In order to get there, she's got to go that way, then that way. And then a couple of zigzags to get to the feedlot. It's just, it's a efficiency killer to say the least. That is why we are looking into a pull type manure spreader. So if anybody out there runs pull type spreader, let me know what you got, what you like, what you don't like. Um, just off the top of my head, kind of ones we were looking at are like Degelman or JBS. Kind of ones that can haul 20 about 20, 30, 35 ton. That way we can stockpile manure, have Jill stockpile manure all year long, and then come time to spread, get in there, get it done, get it out, and move on. Because that field she's on now, it's 50 acres, and it's going to take her a couple of weeks to get it done. Neighbors shredding some weeds. A lot of weeds around this year. It's amazing what a little rain will do. I let that water tank get low. Uh, sprayers put away. Something I need to do though, load this chemical, take it back over to the supplier. Got a full tote, didn't even open it this year. It's just chemical that we've used quite a bit in the past. It's that guy there, you can see I'm just about out. But we didn't even use five gallon of it this year. So there's no point in having that just sit around Go take it back, turn that, I don't know, probably ten or twelve thousand dollars into a uh, payment for the aerial work they're doing. Here come the balers. So they already got that field bailed. I don't know if they'll go start on the next one. Neighbor swathing hay. Just equipment everywhere today. I suppose I'm on the pickup crew now. Or am I on the chopper? prepping crew. I, I don't know. We've got, we got a lot of things going on trying to get ready for chopping tomorrow. Guys are kind of split up going in different directions this afternoon so without really a bale crew I figured I'd hop on the disc ripper. We got a lot of ground we need to get turned immediately because we're wanting to plant a bunch of new hay so we got to get it ripped, colts packed, floated, 
land planed. It's it's a process, and we need to get it done because we're not moving near fast enough. Well, change of plan. Uh, I guess I'm gonna go park this. I got it fueled up and ready at least. I'm gonna park this, go get some pivots up and running, and then from there I really don't know. Bef before I left last week. This was like the number one job that needed done. We were, we were falling behind. All this ground needed ripped and ready to go. And after a brief conversation, I get the feeling that this doesn't matter. So I, I don't know. Either way, let's go start some pivots. Huh. Pivots already running. Okay then, guess let's go check on the other three. Go Blanca, go! A lot of weeds, a lot of weeds. Another pivot up and running that I did not start. I'm just... uh... Sorry I get really confused with the tuna. When he tells me I should be doing something, I go to do it. And he's there doing it. I guess I'll go start this last one at least because I seen him back there with that one. So I'll start up one of the four. Look at that. I was able to start one of the four. Okay. All four pivots are now up and running. Now the the million dollar question. What what am I supposed to go do now? Am I supposed to go back to the ripper that I parked? Or what? I you tell me, because I don't know anymore. One thing I am going to do is call the dealership we got our four-wheel drive from and figure out where in the hell their tech is to come put the fifth hydraulic on. When I bought that tractor, part of the deal was they were supposed to put a fifth hydraulic on it. They shipped it, apparently, before they put the hydraulic on. Nobody talked to anybody. It sounds like they have about as good a communication as we do. So now for the last six weeks, I've been trying to get them to get a guy over here. Granted, it's a hundred miles for them, but they screwed up. They're gonna fix it. It's just a matter of when. Bart's getting a chopper ready. Hector Roo's getting trucks ready. By trucks, I mean his truck. <laughs> yes, Kenny and I are gonna be on motors. Oh, washouts are fun. Kitty and I are going to be on loaders. Cameron and Aaron are going to be on trucks. Where are you going, Kitty? I don't know. Anyways, go pick up the bales from Friday, Saturday, and today. Not a whole lot, but there is some. So down the road we go. This thing is so rough. Having to sort through the bales. Bale guys told me where the good ones are, where the bad ones are. These are all stuff I got bailed Friday. This is all junk. What he's got on is good. It's bleached all the hell, so it looks horrible, but it's good. Now I gotta go sort through the next field to find some more good ones. Cam's leaving with a load of good bales. Aaron's here to get a load. This is where our system works. We gotta take everything to a hay shed exactly one mile to the north, but we're in the middle of a mile, so it's a lot of zigzagging. By the time you do that with a stinger, two loaders, two trucks, we can get this done in no time. Now, that takes four guys. Luckily, our operation, you can find four guys. Goes Aaron with load number two. Got about a half load here. And then a bunch of junk. Oh well, two and a half loads is better than no loads of good hay. You know the bales are pretty tough. One, when they look this bad, but two, when you can't hardly get your forks to slide out of them. Gotta sit here and wiggle them around. Come on, look at, there it goes. Bingo. These, unfortunately, were sacrifices we had to make. Saturday, when I was on the way home, actually, um, they were calling for big rain here Saturday evening. 
so Saturday morning there was an early thunderstorm coming. They said, well, last time we waited on this field in late for almost two full weeks, or actually a little bit longer than that, between Swathen and Bailing, let's just go bail it a little tough right now and deal with the consequences of that. So we got uh, basically a truckload of bales that are, I think Bart said, kind of in the 30, 35% range. So it sucks, but it is what it is. Somebody should really clean these windows, but I ain't gonna do it. Cameron's loaded with bales. They bounce out here on the road from this pivot. We gotta work on some driveways for this guy. We don't got a driveway along this whole half mile that a semi can make easily. But we're gonna haul this pivot over to the feedlot. But we've had trouble with their scale, so we're gonna spot weigh again. Go weigh it on ours, which is a whopping two miles away. And we'll double check it with theirs. So, just lots of fun. Makes really easy to kill an afternoon doing this. Bales are done. The grand powwow to figure out tomorrow's plan is done, which is kind of pointless because it's going to change by tomorrow, anyways. Oh, that feels cool underneath there. Hey. Maybe. Nope. Right there. Let's go over to the pickup. I learned this last time. So, this was raked today. On Monday, it was swapped on Friday. The uh, bale guys, whenever they got done with the field I was picking up, came over here and said it was tougher than hell. Yeah, it snapped no problem. I might try and come bale this this evening. Be about 30 acres. Be good barn hay. I don't know. Here's. Here's the killer. Them bastards. The piggus weedus, as they say. <laughs> I don't know. That feels, that feels like a lot of moisture. I'm trying to come bail that after the sun goes down. Because I know you're all dying to know. What's the corn update? What's corn like? How soon is corn gonna start? Stuff ain't bad. Call it seven, eight foot tall right here. Yeah, we got we got no ears. It's all up, no ears. Here's one of the near. This field is clearly still well in pollination. Da, da, da. Come on. So we are at what you would call milk stage. You hear that? I'm popping them. Popping all the milk out of them. So that is still weeks away to say the least but corn corn is progressing ours is late because we didn't get anything early if you remember we had kind of a late april early may you could get some stuff done but we were trying to finish our wheat so we didn't plant anything then middle of may got super wet so all of ours is late may corn but it's progressing nicely couple weeks yet but tomorrow same but a lot but tomorrow harvest begins so we'll take my chopper one of the zerns three of the trucks 50 acres of sorghum feed forage sorghum however you want to say it to go knock out so we'll get that done see you guys well hell, i'll just see you guys in the morning 